Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi, and you can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Hello everyone, I'm Ken Calvert alongside Father Joe Grimaldi, and we would like to welcome you once again to the Father Joe Grimaldi podcast. The Lincoln Spring Sales event is going on now at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln. Shop online at StarLincoln.com and take a virtual tour of their incredible 2021 lineup. The Aviator, the all-new Corsair, the Nautilus, the impressive Navigator. Want a sedan? Well, now's the time to make an incredible deal on the remaining 2020 Lincoln MKZs. Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln celebrating 50 years as the area's premier Lincoln dealer with service second to none from an oil change to a major repair looking for a previously owned Lincoln. My friends, look no further than Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln. Call Star Lincoln 248-354-4900 for sales or service. Father Joe Grimaldi and I are both driving a Star Lincoln because not unlike you, we receive the Star treatment. Simply head to StarLincoln.com or call 248-354-4900. Ah, Father Joe, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's quiz time for Father Joe. That was number one of what? Number one of eight. Uh Uh-huh. Matter of fact, it's the Sermon on the Mount. Uh Uh-huh. And blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Basically, what we're saying is this, that we have material things in this material world that we need and we use and that's great thank god that we have computers and phones and all of these other things that makes communication so much easier to deal with however it's a matter of what do we do with our possessions if we concentrate on strictly owning, 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 where we can't even think of what we're going to do with all the money that we have and all of the property that we accumulate. What good is that? Where is that going to get us? Nowhere. So when we speak about poor in spirit, we are not speaking about poverty. We're speaking about what's called detachment, okay, so that, yes, I have a beautiful computer, but it's used for my work, it's used for my knowledge, and so on. And I'm not so attached to it that I need three more computers (laughs) or four more computers, okay? The same thing with a house. The Lord wants us to live in a nice place. He wants us to live in a nice life. And so we own a house and a nice house, okay? But we don't need four, five, six homes that could be used in so many other ways. So it's a spirit of detachment. What the Lord wants us to do is treat material things for what they're worth, and that's the use. So we use the things. We don't necessarily want to have them become part of us. So even a poor person could become at fault in poor in spirit. You say, well, why? How could he? He's already poor. There's nothing. Yes, he could, because sometimes people that accumulate millions and millions of dollars without really any good reason are equal to those who accumulate millions of one cent pieces if you want Uh, okay so in other words the spirit of poverty is not so much poverty it's detachment we need these things we use these things they're gifts to us but by the same token we don't need to accumulate more than we need and then how do we use what we have well for example we recently before we started this podcast this morning We recently spoke about famous ball players that uh, all of a sudden they sign a contract for $60 million in three years. Well, what does a person 
like that use all of that money for? Obviously, he's going to need it for his family, and he's going to need it for his living. He's going to need it for whatever. But by the same token, what does he do with the money that he doesn't need? And that's where I think that person should be thinking about helping others who are really in need. If you have that kind of money, you want to be able to be altruistic. You want to be able to give what you can to help others. So that's basically it. It's not poverty in the sense of what we know poverty to be. It's really detachment. There was a time when, as a religious, when I had a book for my use, and I needed it because of my classroom work. Now, mind you, this may sound silly to a lot of people, but in the front cover of the book, I would have to write Ad Uzum and my name, which simply means that the book was my use. I was not technically the owner, even though I was. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's Ad Uzum. That's what we would do, the Latin. So with my name on it, that's my book. But it's not my book. It's I need the book for my use. Well, by now, you have picked up on the theme that we're discussing, the Beatitudes, of which there are eight. And I would say number one is probably, well, I mean, I don't know if it's number one, is that mean it's the most important? For example, number two is, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, a subject that recently is very near and dear to my heart. And I was indeed comforted. By, by not only you, but by family and friends. And that's what it's about. And really. that's what it's about. Because the Lord operates through other people. You know, it's very interesting to me when someone is in the depths of mourning because they've lost a loved one, and they say, where is God at this time? And meanwhile, the casseroles are coming in, yeah. the uh, cards are coming in, the phone calls are coming in, and it's all, to me, that's God working through others to give us the comfort that we need. So, blessed are those who mourn, mourning in the sense that we miss that person who's gone, but also we have to realize the meaning of life hereafter, and I think this is one of the things we have to keep in mind, and that in itself was a comforting word. Not to mention the fact that so many passings now come with the comfort of making a donation to a charity that will ultimately help others. Yes. Of so that's a beautiful way to pass along a memory yeah. as well. And I, I think we found that more and more, the fact that people do say, in lieu of flowers, please, yeah. make a donation to John or Susan's favorite charity, which was. And yeah. I, I think that's nice. Let's go to number three. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Well, let's interpret the word. But we think of the word meek. Meek does not mean that the person is stupid and not going to do what he has to do or what she has to do. I think meek means that we are civil with one another, that we're able to have a decent discussion, negotiation, whatever you want to call it, with other people. And we can be centered in what we have to say. And I think, you know, if we are meek, um, it means that we are loving, we're understanding, we try to understand the other person, if you want. And so if we are meek, the Lord will bless us in more ways than one. I often think that meek possibly suggests shy or keeping to oneself. I don't know. I must be misusing the word but i think you're correct i think yeah. it is shy there's no question but shy in the sense too that you know the meek person is the second thing you said is not really going to speak up for himself very often the lord wants us to speak up for ourselves okay so being meek does not mean you're going to be stupid about things <laughs> right. okay yeah uh you have to uh, be civil. That's what I, I think that's even a better word. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, be civil with one another. Yeah, be civil with one another, for you'll inherit the land. 
Number four, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Yeah, and once again, you know, the exegesis is pretty much the same for all of them. When we speak about, do we put our stomachs ahead of doing what we have to do with, to gain eternal life? <laughs> and that's what we mean by blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. In other words, material things, whether it be food, whether it be things, they're there to help us get along in this life. We're not going to need food in the next life. And so we have to concentrate on working towards that eternal life, the eternal kingdom. And once we understand that, we will be satisfied. I very quickly just take it to also mean that like for those of you who are anxious to get up each and every day and do the right thing you're going to have that feeling of satis satisfaction if, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness righteousness to me means doing the right obviously yeah. der derivative doing the right thing at the right time as often as you can right you get great satisfaction from helping someone unexpectedly helping someone for example you notice someone is in need of just even holding a door or whatever the case may be, getting out of a car or helping someone up on a walk. I mean, something like that, anything. It's, that's, it's, that's, yeah. that's something that a lot of people just turn a blind eye that's to. That's great, yeah. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Yeah, I mean, the person who's going to be a real pain in the you-know-what, I think, <laughs> uh, certainly doesn't deserve somebody else's kindness and mercy. So basically is whenever we have decisions to make, we want to make them with understanding, okay? And I think if we are merciful with others, the Lord will be merciful with us. If we are not, and we know plenty of people who are not, well, uh, they're going to be lacking in their life. Number six is, blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. And I'll just go to number seven. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And number eight, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It goes on from there. But basically, there's a theme throughout the entire eight beatitudes correct yeah. if i combine the eight with the ten as in the commandments i should be in pretty good shape well see the whole thing is this that the ten commandments are simply a way of living a civil life mm -hmm. when jesus came on this earth he expanded the meaning of the ten commandments and he expanded them with the Beatitudes. In other words, when he says, do not covet to your neighbor's wife, it's more than just staying away from her, but we shouldn't even be lusting after her. So he says, we got to go a step further on all of these things. See, what the Lord says is this, sin begins in the mind. The end of that thought is the action. So once you think about it, it's already begun. Sin has begun because the end result is the action. And that's what's wrong. What the Lord says to us, we have to take the Ten Commandments, but then go a step further with all of them so that we take into realization that the sin, the bad action, starts with the thinking, the mind. Have we moved on? When will we move on to, I know that it's it's on a schedule of A, B, and C. Oh, the uh, readings, yeah. Yeah. When do we turn the card and start the next cycle? What cycle are we in right now? B. When will we move on to C? On the first day of Advent. Okay. All right. And then A and B and C and so on. Basically, if we listen to the readings carefully, both the Sunday readings as well as the weekday readings, we are covering most of the Bible, Yes, even the Old Testament. Yes. So not all of it, but most of it. And so that's why the church has set it up that way, so that if we do it for people who don't read the Bible, we are doing it by the 
three cycles in the church so that people will start to understand what that's all about. The reason why I brought that up is because of the fact that each and every day I get in my email the gospel for each and every day. Every day's gospel I get first thing. It's delivered at several it's delivered at four thirty in the morning and I, I happen to get it through uh, the university or Notre Dame University. Yeah, there's several agencies that do that. Yeah, you know, yeah, and I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it because there's always somebody from Notre Dame, a graduate, you have the gospel and then their reflection on the gospel. And I always find it interesting because it's sort of a breakdown of the gospel. And the reason why I brought up the cycles was because I was curious, the gospel that I'm reading today it will not be the same next year because we will be into a different cycle. Am I correct on that? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The cycle you're reading today is a weekday, so most likely it only two alternatives for weekday readings. Right. Okay. So, okay. All right. So the first reading will change. The gospel may stay the same. When we speak about the cycle, the three cycles, we're really talking just the weekends. Okay. Then there's something else for the weekdays. Through these podcasts over three years, I've learned so much, and I still have to go back to some elementary questions that, like, I remember we've talked about this a couple of times, the cycles, A, B, and C. And I remember vividly you saying, by doing that over three years, if you don't read the Bible, you basically will have heard the entire Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. yeah and I find it fascinating. And today, I well, actually over the past couple of weeks, I've noticed the word beatitude. And that's why today's topic was indeed, let us discuss the eight beatitudes. And I wonder how often people just simply take a refresher course and go and read the eight beatitudes. Do you remember in grade school, were you told to memorize them? Yes, yeah, so if you've gone to a Catholic grade school, nowadays there are fewer and fewer people that do that, but in the grade school they used to tell us to memorize the uh, Beatitudes. It's basically the Sermon on the Mount, okay? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Matthew 5, yeah. Okay. One of the reflections that I read in this Notre Dame daily was this student reflecting back on his or her First Communion and the fact that they had to study for the First Communion. And in fact, they were saying, we had to know and recite the Ten Commandments, we had to recite the Eight Beatitudes, and we had to correctly say the prayers, the Hail Mary and the Our Father. And I thought, by golly, by gosh, I bet you must have graduated about the same time I did, because I remember that was exactly it. But at the same time, I remember memorizing the Twelve Apostles. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, Simon, James, Judas, and Jude. Isn't it odd that I still can go back oh so many years and do that's that? Gr- that's great. I found it an interesting topic, and I hope you did too. Yes, it is. Okay. There's no question. With that said, how about a little Father Joe prayer? Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit a different thing today. Is it from about... St. Anonymous? I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, in a way, yes, because I have no idea who the author is, but the psalm is not. The psalm is David, St. David, if you want to call him that. Okay. You know, fear is the one, is one of the strongest feelings most Christians have right now. Why is this happening? Where is God in all of this? Who allowed this to get so bad? Not having the answers can leave us feeling confused and anxious. This Bible verse from the Psalms reminds us that we are not alone. We can seek refuge in God's arms and he will give us the strength to keep pushing forward. We do not have to fear the state of the world because we have him on our side. I think all of us these days, when we are in the middle of a transition from the seriousness of the virus to almost a complete liberation that happened overnight, I think there's a lot of confusion because there's a lot of side events that are causing the confusion. We see an increase in certain areas 
of the COVID, and yet the COVID has almost disappeared throughout the United States. But then you see in India it was building up. We see it not gone completely, so it's confusing. Yes. All right, so Psalm 46, and I'm just going to read the two verses. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. God bless you all. This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. If you'd like, you can email us. It's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply search Father Joe Grimaldi. And thanks for listening, everyone.